So I tried six rackets within one year. And in this video, what I'm going to do is tell you about what I liked about each one of them, what I disliked about all of these rackets. And if you stick to the end, I'll tell you the reason why, as well as which rackets I'd like to try in the year 2023. Without further ado, let's go. So racket number one is the Technifiber Carboflex Heritage 125. This is actually quite a famous racket. It's the famous yellow racket, which can be seen at many clubs. Also, Mohamed Al Shabagi used it very early on in his career. And even though it's a bit outdated, it was obviously a very, very popular racket. If you can find one, it's still actually a very good racket to use. In a nutshell, what I liked about the racket was it was a great overall racket. In fact, it's probably one of my all-time favorite rackets. I was actually very happy with it until it broke, and that was the catalyst for me actually searching for a new racket in the year of 2022. One thing that I think makes it very different to most of the Technifiber rackets is that it is not as stiff as many of the other Technifiber frames. And I think partnered with their traditional 305 green string, and it doesn't matter which type of string it was, the 1.25 millimeters or the 1.1, it was an excellent racket. What I dislike about the racket, well, not much, except for the fact that it's really hard to find, and that's obviously because it's a bit outdated and it was very popular. If I'm not mistaken, it was, I think, released around 2014 or 2015. So being the year 2022, to actually find a racket which is that good and has actually lost three years, I'm not too sure why Tekken 5 discontinued that range, but yeah, unfortunately, it's, it is something that is really hard to find. Racket number two that I tried this year was the Technifiber Carboflex X-Speed at 135 grams. So this was actually a racket which is a lot heavier than what I'm used to, which had its pros and cons. The Carboflex 135 had the white, red, and black cosmetic, which was actually really kind of cool. It is very heavy compared to what I'm used to, and obviously that has some upsides and some downsides, which I'll get into in a bit. And to be honest with this racket, probably would suit a lot of players. I only gave it one session, very brief sort of encounter with the racket with the factory strings as well. So I probably would say that they are people which can give a little bit more feedback on the racket itself but with all due respect it is actually a very popular racket this is what i liked about it i think this characteristic is less to do with the fact that it is a taking five x speed more to do with the fact that it is a 135 racket but it was great for digging the balls out of the back corners and also for straight line hitting. There's one thing that I can say out of the rackets that I've tested throughout this year, it probably had the most amount of power and probably for some people like me, probably a bit too much power. I have also mentioned the fact that it came with a red, black and white colorway, which I think was actually quite nice and probably attracted me to the racket in the beginning. Really beautiful, the way it looked like, cosmetics and everything else. What I disliked about the racket was, and this is probably more to, towards the fact that I am not used to playing with heavy rackets, but yeah, it was a pretty heavy racket. And for me, that took the volley option out of the equation. But in all honesty, I think will be a great racket for juniors in fact there are some of the kids that i do coach which play with this racket and they only speak very highly about the x speed racket number three which is the technifiber supreme 125 this is more commonly known as the assault racket it has a 470 square centimeter head size which does make it a little bit smaller with respect to head size compared to some of the other traditional shape rackets for some of you who are regulars to the channel you probably might have found my channel through my thumbnail which was around me playing with this and actually getting this 125 supreme what I liked about the racket was that it was a phenomenal control racket. Controlling the ball, playing volleys, playing your drops, playing drives, playing sort of any type of shot, as long as you hit it sweetly, it was perfect. The feedback that you got was phenomenal. I found that it was very rewarding to hit the ball into certain areas and spaces. I do believe that it is a racket that would improve your sweet spot hitting, especially if you are a player that hits a lot of balls in the frame. I think adopting this racket or having it as a practice racket could be good for you due to the smaller head size and also the smaller sweet spot. It could improve your hitting and make it a lot better. What I did not like about the racket is that it is a technically complicated racket. I feel like you have to adapt, adapt your swing and also obviously concentrate a lot more in order to hit the ball cleanly, which is something that is a characteristic of traditional frame rackets compared to your teardrop shape rackets. You'll probably find that you have to concentrate a little bit more and actually perfect your timing to hit the ball a lot sweeter. I do find that the racket was very unforgiving due to the small head size. So missed time shots or shots under pressure will not be as rewarding and you find yourself in a lot of trouble. That is something that can be improved upon obviously with the coach or spending a lot more time with the racket, solo hitting, solo drills, and also doing pressure sessions with the racket. But as I said, some of these things are more personal characteristics or things that were an issue for me and not particularly about the racket per se but a few people might find these as common dislikes about this racket i also found due to the fact that it had a smaller sweet spot and when you hit it it was really rewarding you have a tendency to play sort of cute squash or perfect squash in that sense where you're actually looking for those perfect shots and perfect winners every single time instead of actually just doing your job and actually executing and putting the ball in whatever spot or difficult spot that your opponent is going to be in. Racket number four. So racket number four is the Technifiber Carboflex Airshaft 125. At this moment in time, this is probably one of your most popular rackets, similar to the Heritage 125. You'll probably find it with a lot of club players, a lot of juniors. Um, it is a racket that Technifiber pushed things, especially after the COVID pandemic and El Shabag obviously played with this racket for 
for a very long period of time. So it is one of their most popular rackets, one of their best selling rackets as well. This will probably be a go-to for many players and I see it also on the Reddit communities and squash communities. If someone is unsure of what racket they need to get, you'll probably find that you'll find comfort with the Techni Fiber Airshaft 125. What I liked about the racket is that it's a good racket overall, not a great racket, and that's just my personal preference, but it was a really good racket overall. I think that partnered with a good string and the right tension, obviously depending on how you play, it might be your perfect racket. I think it really appeals to the general public in terms of durability, cosmetics, and just the way it plays. Overall, it's a very safe racket, and it's probably why it will be a very popular racket amongst players. One of the other things that you would like about it is that it is very solid, very durable. I have obviously seen the racket break. Even though I have seen that happen, it has been on very rare occasions. What I did dislike about the air shaft, and once again, this is something that might be common with Techni Fibers, is that it is a very stiff frame. Sometimes it did feel like a sort of blunt instrument, if I can say that, or something that you just swing at a ball. Although that can be changed, as I said, with the right string. So I found a lot of good comfort partnering the air shaft with the Ashaway Power Nick. 18s, which is the red strings. I think that's going to be personal preference to a lot of people. Some people like the Dynamax VP that it came with. For me, it was a terrible combination, but as I said, changing the string actually made the racket more playable and more enjoyable for me. Racket number five, and for me, this is probably my favorite racket out of all of the rackets, which was the Dunlop Sonic Core Revelation Pro Lite. So this is not the Ali Farag version, it is the red version. I'm starting to see a lot of players with this racket, and this is obviously a lot of juniors, as well as club players and professionals. It is the same racket that is used by Victor Kwa, Sarah Jane Penny, as well as Shahan Jakan. And I think there is a reason why it is a really, really good racket overall. There are obviously some flaws, which I'll get into, but I think it is probably one of the best feeling rackets I've played with this year. So I do think Dunlop has done a really great job with redesigning their rackets um, with the Sonic Core technology and also coming back into the market and being a big player with respect to rackets. I think there was a time where Technifiber took over the space, but Dunlop have come back and they've actually really, really made sure that they can actually produce a good, not actually good, a great racket that a lot of people would enjoy. So I think it's an alternative to the air shaft with respect to either the price or the playability as well, but you should probably also find a lot of comfort on with this record. So there are a couple of things that I've liked about this, and this is actually gonna be a long list, but here we go. I think there's a brilliant balance between power and control, and that comes from the 490 square centimeter head size. So just smaller than the 500, which we will probably have in the traditional head uh, teardrop shape, but obviously a bit bigger than your really, really small rackets, which will be around 470 square centimeters. So that's where you get the perfect blend of power and control due to the head size being just smaller than your traditional racket, but also just bigger than most of your traditional control rackets as well. I found that the racket was very maneuverable. It comes in at 125 grams. This one, I won't say is head light, but I do feel that it is an evenly balanced racket and it is very maneuverable and sort of does well in all areas of the court. As I said, it's obviously great in the air for volleys and also for playing your drop shots, but also out of the back is quite nice, especially if you can get your hands around the ball and wrap your strings around the ball quite nicely. With respect to just the cosmetics, it's very striking in color. Some people might like it, some people, it might put a few people off, but you obviously always notice when their racket is around or someone is playing with it. Dunlop have done really well with respect to their vibration technology. So I found that there was minimal to no vibration on the racket itself. And as I said, that is something that you sort of are cautious about when you play with Dunlop rackets because they always come with those dampeners. But apart from that, without the dampener, I found that there was minimal to no vibration at all. But even though there's a good balance between control and power, I do find it was quite forgiving. And one of the biggest pros is also that they came with a premium string, which is the Dunlop Pro AF, which is the Ali Farag signature string. Even though you might not think about it, and I'll talk about it in this video with respect to the strings that I tried this year, playing with a premium string or changing a string or a racket coming with a really good string really does affect how your feet feedback is when you are testing out rackets. Things that I hated, as much as the cosmetic paint job, which is the striking red that I spoke about is really nice, it also chipped very easily. So a little scratch on the wall, you found that there were sort of chips, chip marks on your racket. It does come out looking battered and bruised compared to some of the other rackets like a Technifiber with respect to how they paint or how they um, do the cosmetics on their rackets. With respect to, and this might be obviously a thing in South Africa, resale value is obviously quite low because not a lot of people play with Dunlop or that type of Dunlop. It is a racket where I found that there was very little information about, not many people had it. The first time I did see it was with Ruan Olifier when he came down to Port Elizabeth to play in the PSA tournament. And that's the first time I actually saw the racket. Um, apart from that, I think when I played with it, I was 
probably the only person in this area. But this obviously might change depending where you are. And I think it's quite a popular racket in the UK from what I've seen and what I understand as well. Last but not least, we're gonna to get to my current setup. So this is racket number six, which is the Technifiber Carboflex X-Top. I've got the 130 gram version, but obviously it does come in 125, 130, 135. And then there's also a 125 newer El Shabini version. With respect to this racket, I tried all of the X-Top ranges about a month before they came out and were available. I think there is a video which I'll probably try show you now of me hitting with gear vault and we were able to obviously take all the rackets through their paces testing obviously a variety of shots and for me the 130 is the one that stood out not to say that the 125 is a terrible racket it's just i think without the without the bumper it does change the feel of the racket at least for me personally with respect to this, like many people, I was a bit skeptical about the newer technology and the fact that there is no bumper. What I can assure you is that after playing with these rackets for about two and a half months, they are just as durable as old rackets and the new technology, the X-Top technology, is something that's actually quite nice with respect to minimizing vibration and also the, the Teflon coated bumper really does aid with scraping walls off the wall and it is something that you can take an advantage of. So with respect to the X-Top, what I like about it is that it delivers a lot of power and that's across the entire range. Obviously, as you go heavier with the rackets, I felt that there was a lot more power, but I think you'll find a lot of joy across the entire range. And as mentioned, they obviously have, like the Airshaft, made all of the sort of racket weights available. It would be nice to see a 120 version probably. I know some people would like a lighter racket and it would probably make a big difference, but I'm not too sure if they can obviously guarantee that they can still have the same durability at 120 grams. As I mentioned, the Teflon coating on the top of the bumper really does help with scraping walls out of the back of the corners and also which are really close to the sidewall. And so that has its advantages, obviously. And it is a very durable racket. They've done a lot to really make sure that it is reinforced at the top and throughout the frame of the racket as well. Cosmetically, they look beautiful. Maybe ex except for the like little yellow top part in the bumper, maybe that could have been a different color. But apart from that, they are great looking rackets and you can obviously also notice them when you are walking around squash clubs and you can actually see people playing. What I do hate about it, I feel that to provide the durability by removing the bumper, they might have obviously made the racket frame a little bit stiff. So for me, Personally, I don't feel as much feedback and in order to navigate around that, I switched to a very thin string, which is the Taking Fiber 1.1 millimeter 305 string. And with that being said, also increasing my tension, obviously to get a little bit more control and feel out of the racket has helped to circumvent sort of that characteristic. I think one of the things that most people will also say about it and probably is something that is preventing some people from even trying or buying this racket is that it is heavy with regards to the price compared to all the other rackets. And obviously I have mentioned that your your Sonic Core Revelation Pro Lite as well as your Air Shaft are really decent and really good rackets that people can feel at home with. You probably find that people would end up going to mop those up at lower prices compared to, you know, investing in buying one of these X-Top rackets. And that's that, those are the six rackets that I tried this year. And as promised, let's talk about the reasons why I tried all of these rackets, as well as the rackets I'll probably want to try in the future. So although I've been playing squash from the age of 12, and I am 30 now, so yeah, that is 18 years. There are two periods within this 18 year span where I have stopped playing squash. I think that equates to a period of five and a half years. During that period of time, the game has changed a lot with respect to the technology in the racket, as well as how the game is being played or has been played. So I have found myself obviously getting back into the sport and realizing, well, something's obviously different. I'm obviously still trying to find my comfort and find how I can obviously adapt to the new changes in technology as well as the game itself. And that might take some time, especially when you sport with a lot of options, as well as being away from the sport for quite a long period of time. The game has got a lot faster. I've got a lot slower as I've aged and I need to obviously find the right balance for myself with respect to how I play and also the records that I choose, which will give me and will provide the most advantage to me. This absence from the game as well as the change in rackets or technology, racket technology, is one of the reasons I also did my level one coach because I, one, I feel that I need to learn about the game as well, as well with respect to how it has changed and also be able to help sort of juniors which are also trying to improve their game. I am far away from finding my ideal racket, but with the level one course that I did, as well as Tyrant's coaching, I am finding that it is quite easier to make adaptations to play the game in the modern way with whatever racket I am given. Yes, some people probably might find that it is quite weird to try play with six different rackets, but I don't feel it has affected my game that much, except for just maybe my confidence or the fact that I feel comfortable with the racket that I'm playing with. So maybe as things develop, meaning I obviously spend a lot more time coaching and I take more lessons obviously with my coach who's a lot younger than me, play squash in a very modern way. I might find that it really doesn't matter, but up until then, I'm obviously still gonna have fun trying out different rackets. 
before moving on to the discussion point around the rackets that I want to try, there is one thing I do want to say is that racket choice is a very personal preference. It's a personal choice and I think that you cannot make it based on other people's reviews, opinions. You can obviously get a general sense about the racket, what it is that it will provide you. But the most important factor about choosing a racket is actually testing it out. So don't get into a trap of obviously reading too many reviews, watching too many videos about certain rackets, which might influence your opinion. And then obviously when you try it out, you obviously have a different experience. The way a racket feels a person depends on many things. The way that they want to string it, with respect to tension, what strings they use, what strings they prefer, the grip, person's experience, person's technique, person's style. So there's so many factors that influence your racket choice. Be very cautious with regards to thinking that a review will obviously form your overall opinion without trying it. Here are a few rackets that I probably would like to try in 2023 if it does become possible. So there are only two rackets as of now that I would love to try. Number one would be the Dunlop. Sonic Core Evolution 120. So this is the Nick Matthew racket. It's obviously gone through a remodel. They've obviously put the new Sonic Core technology into this racket and they've given it a new cosmetic design. It's also a 120 gram racket, which will be a very light racket compared to what I am used to and I have played with. But I am obviously interested in trying out the smaller head size, which I think it comes in around 480 square centimeters. So just smaller than the Revelation Pro Lite. And also it is a racket that promises to be very maneuverable in the air. So if I do become a lot quicker and a lot stronger and obviously play a lot more of a, an attacking game with respect to volleys, I think it would aid me obviously with the fact that it's a bit lighter and a little bit more maneuverable. Although I did not include in the video, I do have a 130 gram version of this, which is known as the Declan James version, but I obviously haven't played enough with it to give you enough feedback. So I haven't played any sort of games or any sort of matches or even just playing King in general to actually give you any sort of proper feedback about it. I do know it is quite head heavy compared to the rackets that I use, compared to all the rackets that I've used. So that obviously has a different way that it plays, but we'll probably do something around that next year. Other racket that I would like to try, and it's also not available in SA, so both these rackets are not available in South Africa at this moment in time, is the Caracol Raw Pro 120 gram version as well. So also a very light racket, it is the one that Joel Macon uses. There are similar rackets to it from Caracol per se, not to say it would play out differently, I do know that it has a smaller head size as well compared to your 500 square centimeter teardrop shapes. So it is a racket I am very interested in trying with respect to how maneuverable it is, especially in front. If you've seen any of Joel Macon's Instagram videos, you can see obviously he loves playing his volleys and they really come in quite nicely the way he gets cut on the ball and obviously that can be due to the fact that the racket is very maneuverable. If you also see his racket preparation and if you watch any of his videos about keeping an active wrist, you'll probably find it's much easier when you've got a lighter racket in order to keep an engaged wrist the way he does. And ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. So if you have any feedback or have any questions, just send me a message on Instagram or you can always drop a comment down below. Other than that, take care and see you next time. Cheers.